Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kerji. So today we are going to talk about turning your digital photos into film photos with the Dehancer Lightroom plugin. And as we all know, our Sony ZV-10, Sony A7C, they can take amazing JPEG and also amazing RAW photos. And also I have always been so fascinated about those cameras, you know, Ricoh GR and also the Fujifilm X100V and also their most recent release, the Fujifilm X100VI. You know, those cameras, they are digital camera. They just shoot photos that emulate the film look. And all those photos always just pop out on my Instagram feed and also my Facebook feed. And they just look awesome because of the film look. So today we are going to use our Dehancer Lightroom plugin to achieve that look. So guys, let's get started. Here we have a photo taken with the Sony ZV-10 and also the Viewtrux 13mm f1.4. As you can see, it is a raw photo. So the first step, obviously, we are going to correct it here on the Lightroom. Just press auto and yeah, everything seems to be fine. Now we are going into Dehancer. Right click the image and press edit in and go to edit in Dehancer Lightroom. So we will want to edit with a copy of Lightroom adjustment. As you can see a window pops up and we are going to edit inside this Dehancer window. So let's reset all the settings here. So first of all, let's go over to all the panels here. On the left side, you have the films profile, a lot of film profiles to choose from. You can use the drop downs menu to choose your desired film preset. And also we go to the preset here. You can even add or import your favorite preset here and customize just like me. I just customized this picture profile just now, the Kodak Portrait 800. And then on the right hand side is all the setting that you can configure to fine tune your image. So now go over to the setting here. You can hide the tab. Let's start with the first button. As you can see, it looks like a setting, but it just shows you the system information and you can update your film profiles to see your license information. So my GPU is the GeForce RTX 3060 Ti. And the next button is to restore our last use setting. And we have reset all setting to default and also undo and redo. And on the right hand side here, you can toggle on or off the histogram. And the next button is to zoom in or zoom out. So now let's get started on the editing. So the first step to edit your photos to turn it into film, of course, is to have a good white balance. So right now I think it's a little bit, you know, orange. Let's add a little bit more blue. So yeah, this is the basic source setting that you can change the tail and temperature, the fringe option to combat the chromatic aberrations. So the second step here is to choose your film profile. So let's choose your favorite film profile. So for me today, I'm going to choose Fujifilm and it will be the Fuji Color Natura. Natura. Or you can choose Fujifilm Instax. Yes, I'm just going to use Fuji Color Natura and we can push and pull. I'm going to have to push a little bit. Moving on, we are going to edit the film print. So choose your favorite film paper. On this case, you can leave it at linear, of course, but I'm going to choose the Fujifilm 3513 print film. This means that I'm printing on the Fujifilm print film. So let's adjust a little bit for the exposure and also the tonal contrast. And then moving on to color density, we can increase the color density. It essentially just means how dense your color are. And then let's move forward to expand, which allow us to set the black point and the white point individually. So this is very useful because now my building is very, very dark. I want to show the windows here and also the white point. As you can see, this picture is quite bright because of the sun over there. And you can see this, there's many, many highlights here that I need to decrease. So let's move over to film compressions. So film compression is a very amazing tool. First is the impact, which just means the strength of the following settings. For the film compressions, mainly it just redistribute your highlights. So for the tonal range, as you can see, we can adjust the tonal range. This picture is not that bright anymore. You can see that all the highlights are shifting away. So yes, this will be good. And I can see a lot of difference for this picture compared to my original photos. And guys, I just noticed that the picture is a little bit underexposed. So I'll be coming back here to increase my white point. Yes, this looks perfect. And now let's move over to color head. So this essentially just allows us to tweak the colors. As you can see, my favorite thing is to you know, tweak the shadow tone. You can add a little bit warm or a little bit of cold temperature into the shadow tone. Maybe a bit warmer and also the mid-tone. A colder or warmer. You like it cold or normal? 
so I don't bother with the highlight because it just changed a lot of things for the highlight so this will be it or you can just play with the green magenta blue yellow so most of the cinematic film there's going to be a slight yellow in it as you can see this is very yellow so we are just going to lean a little bit more to yellow and now we are close to finish let's add on some film grain and yes just by turning on we can see the film grain there i'm just going to stick to the original of course you can just increase it if you like but i don't really prefer too much grain on it i'll just leave it at default and then i'll turn on the halation so can you see the difference so i'll zoom in for you to see the difference as you can see the subjects there's a slight red or orange glow artifacts on the subject here you can see so if you disable this is sort of you know the most significant things about film when they are shooting analog film they will have this sort of relations and then we can amplify it yes we can amplify the effects and increase the global diffusions and now we are going to add a bloom so once i turn it on as you can see there looks like a soft light that just blast to this soft this picture to make it look softer and we can also add a little bit of vignetting not too much in vignette please and voila now we have a picture that looks like film do you guys think this photo looks like film i absolutely do think that this photo looks like a film photo so after you have done everything you can press a and save this as a new preset you can rename it whatsoever and also you can add your name on there once you save it it will appear on here the save preset here so now let's press ok to save these settings so once i apply the dehancer effect as you can see it just burn into the image so make sure we are editing on a copy of the image and not the original file because it will just burn in into the original file and you might just lose your raw photos and this is it my film picture taken with the sony zve 10 yes i can just post process and make it look like film instead of you know using those rico gr to take a film photos and now guys i will show you some more photos taken with the sony zv10 and edited with the dehancer lightroom And guys, if you are interested in this Dehancer plugin, you can go over to the link in the description below. You can subscribe for 3 months, 6 months, or you can purchase a lifetime license from their website. Of course, it can get a little bit pricey, but Dehancer is also kind enough to provide us a discount code, Koji Visuals, where you can use upon checkout to get 10% discount. Of course, if you use my promo code, my discount code, I will get to earn some commission out of it. And if you wish to support this channel, you can use my discount code Koji Visuals. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This is it using the Sony TV 10 photos and turn it into film look. And guys, so that's all I want to talk about this video. So thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.